So when you've known something in like the techie space and your non-techie friends start talking about it and you're like, wow, okay, things are starting to get popular now when they're talking about it. So recently some of my friends were talking about getting a portable battery power station. I was like, wow, these things are really making it mainstream. So I wanna cover one in a video today. I wanna to cover this battery power station. I wanna show you what it can do, what's on the outside. And I also wanna take it apart to show you what's on the inside and go over a little bit about how it works. So the unit we're gonna look at is the Anchor 521 power station. Anchor did send this to me and they are today's sponsor. In case you're not familiar with what this is, this is a portable power device that can deliver AC power through these ports here and DC power through these ports down here, as well as this car port over here. This is a standard 12 volt port. The inverter here can power these two AC ports up to 200 watts. And another thing to point out is that this USB-C port right here is a power delivery at 60 watts, which means it can output 60 watts to power or charge your laptop. The 521 also has an LED light. That's a nice touch for when it's dark. The chemistry of the batteries in here are lithium iron phosphate, which many electric vehicles are switching to, and the batteries in here have a cell capacity of 256 watt hours. And this whole package weighs a little over eight pounds. Since this is mainly a battery, we have to charge it up. And the method I get most excited about is charging by solar. Now currently Anchor doesn't have a native solar panel to pair with this device. They told me it's coming out next year but I didn't wanna wait until next year, so I made my own MC4 cables and used a car adapter to connect it to my 100 watt solar panel. The charging circuitry can handle up to 65 watts of solar input, so even though I have a 100 watt panel on here, it won't charge any faster than 65 watts. And with the light intensity at the moment, it's only charging about 40 watts anyway, but you gotta love free energy that can charge up these batteries. But unfortunately, it's not always sunny outside, so you can charge with the supplied 65 watt wall charger or the 12 volt car adapter. Some of these units can do dual charging, and you can do that with this one too, which is pretty cool. With an adapter, you can send power through the power delivery port here up to 60 watts, and then you can add in the 65 watt wall charger, and you can almost cut the charging time in half. So what can you do with one of these? It's important if you're gonna get one to know what you want it for. One thing I like about these is that you can literally carry a power outlet wherever you go. I like to test these units with my 20,000 lumen LED lights. They're super bright, and when I plug them in, you can see they're using about 140 watts. You can use a setup like this to light up your entire yard or campsite, for example. Or you can use its 12 volt DC port to run a portable refrigerator and to keep food cold for about four to eight hours or maybe more because the compressor usually doesn't run the whole time. Or you can have it by your bedside table for a battery backup or when you're traveling to plug in things like your phone or your watch. In my tests, I was able to get a sustained output over 200 watts from the AC ports while running a box fan and my LED lights, but know that this is not enough power to run a normal refrigerator or a microwave. So if you wanna get one, think about how you'd plan to use something like this. And if you don't know how much AC power something uses, you can always get a kilowatt hour meter like this and see if it's under 200 watts. So there's a ton of use cases for this power station, but now it's time to take it apart and show you the inside. And because there's a lot of energy inside, I first wanna drain the batteries down to zero and disclaimer, don't try this at home. Now this didn't come with instructions on how to take it apart, but even if it did, I probably wouldn't look at it. I've been a tinkerer all my life, even as a kid, taking things apart, trying to figure out how they worked. Were any of you like that? Let me know in the comments. Now a handy trick I've used over the years is to get a refrigerator magnet to hold and keep track of all your screws. Another thing that I've learned by taking things apart is that there are probably screws hidden under rubberized feet. I've also learned to go slow and not force things. Now that we have a good view of everything, let me explain what some of the parts are. Right down here is the LED light bar that you can see on the front. Of course, you have your 12 volt car port over here. This is the LCD screen. And then you have your AC outlets over here. Next, let's take a look at the main part of the power station. The big thing that I wanna point out is this plastic area right here. This is where all the batteries are. There's an illustration on Anchor's website that shows you that there are 20 individual cells in here and they all add up to that 256 watt hours of storage. On the side here is a printed circuit board. This is the battery management system. So it handles all of the safety and the charging and discharging of the batteries. This battery pack down here is a 12 volt battery pack and we can independently check that and we can see, yes, it's coming in at 12 volts. On the top, we have two circuit boards. This one up here is the inverter, which takes DC and converts it to AC. And this one down here is the brains of the unit and also handles the output and input DC functions. Now you might be wondering, what is some of this white material? This is non-conductive adhesive to hold things in place and guard against vibrations. Let's talk about the AC inverter. It takes in 12 volts down here, and then by the time it hits the output, it outputs 110 volts AC. 
These gray things on here are heat sinks, which is probably why the fan is here to help blow cool air over them as you're using the AC inverter. And this fan itself is actually a little smaller than I expected. So it's the only fan I see on this whole unit, which is, uh, which is nice. And when I was using it, the fan barely even came on. And even when it did, it wasn't very loud. This side is the brain and handles the DC in and out of the unit. Now right here is the input. It usually expects 12 volts to come in, but it can actually handle a range of 11 volts up to 28 volts. So if you're using solar panels, for example, it can make the right adjustments to give the proper voltage to the battery management system. It also has the function of taking the 12 volts and converting it to the power that's needed for the USB-A ports and the power delivery port. So it can take 12 volts, converts it down to five volts for these guys. And this one can be a whole range because it's a power delivery port uh, up to 20 volts. So it has the, the functionality to do that in, on this board. Also on this board, it has the circuitry to figure out what's plugged into these USB ports and to charge it at its maximum safe rate. That's what that IQ label is on the front. So this is the new thing to have AC and DC power in a portable package like this that you can take virtually anywhere. Again, thank you to Anchor for sending the 521 power station so I could show you what's inside and go over a little bit about how this works. If you like this video where I've gone over some of the electronics in here, well then you might like this video where I fix a TV.